This next video is going to be of Tintin on the Moon for the Amstrad Plus. I don't have a box or a manual for this copy of Tintin on the Moon. I do have quite a few other Amstrad Plus games on cartridge though. Oh yeah, there they are. Got a few here. No exit, plotting, switchblade, Crazy Cars 2, Barbarian, Operation Thunderbolt, Dick Tracy, I did do a video of Dick Tracy years and years ago. So I've got these games boxed. I don't really, I don't really look for for any other games. It would be nice if a copy of Chase HQ two became available or Gaza two, but I get a feeling if that did become available, the price would just be so stupidly high. But these are all these are all mixed up with uh, Mega Drive games I've got up here. Some Sega Saturn games there as well. Anyway, uh, on to Tintin on the Moon. I must admit, I bought this game because it's one of the games that's available on cartridge. There's a nice intro. French games always seem to have more presentation than uh, British made Amstrad games. I've got this on cassette tape and it's practically identical. Uh, the, only, the only difference is that it's a multi-load on cassette. The game takes place on two different types of levels. There's the approach and then there's the uh, space stations, I guess. Yeah, so that there's these flying sections and then there's the platform sections, basically. And there's not really a lot of objects on screen here, but um, the scaling on them rocks is actually really quite smooth. So here we are at one of the space stations. I think that's what they are. Because I think we're making our way to the moon and these are just uh, stop off points on the way.
There's a few things you have to do to progress in the level. So I've got to collect those, let's just say they're bombs. What you also have to do is you have to put out fires. So you have to find a fire extinguisher. You have to make sure your two friends aren't captured by that guy. That guy just farts out fires. Uh, you have to capture the guy and you have to make sure your friends aren't captured. And once all of that has been triggered, then you just automatically move on to the next level. So it looks quite nice. It's a little bit scruffy with its mode zero graphics, but it's actually quite nice. I, I think um, I think it'd be really good if there was a bit more of a game there as well. But yeah, this, this red guy is really obnoxious. God, look at that. Leave me alone. You might notice me floating up and down awkwardly. There's uh, an anti-gravity button. If you press button one, then you use the fire extinguisher. And if you use button two, then you turn anti-gravity on and off. I don't know how that works on the cassette version actually, because there is only one button on typical Amstrad controllers. But yeah, I, I don't know if this was a good choice to release as a cartridge game. Um, I mean, I don't really know what their decision making would be to choose which games to release on cartridge, but Infograms had loads of different Amstrad games they could have chosen. Uh, maybe it was the small file size. Maybe it fit nicely on a cartridge. Maybe the gameplay is a bit more like console games than other Infograms games. But all in all, it looks nice, but it really isn't a good game. It's actually taken me ages to get past this level and it really shouldn't have done. But I've finally done it. And now we can move on to stage two. And as you can see here, this is exactly the same. It's exactly the same stuff. You actually do get a nice animation if you get hit by one of those rocks. Actually, this is like those Andy Asteroids levels in Earthworm Jim. All right, so we're on our second. See, I call I call them space stations. I don't really know what they are. But you do have a nice variety of graphics as well in the background. Even though the choice of colours could have been better. I don't think they changed anything about this game for the cartridge release except that colour picture at the start. Oh, there we go. All done. This game is very short. You can see there at the bottom, actually, if you see that sort of um, progress bar, there's only five stages and then you're at the moon.
Now, I'm not all that familiar with the, the Tintin IP, but I did try to look into this a little bit before doing this video for, you know, stuff to talk about. None of the websites that I found actually gave any information on the gameplay. They just said that it was based on a comic, which is uh, sort of obvious, really. But um, the Tintin comics are really old. And there was a couple of stories. I think it was two of the comics were based on their adventures on going to the moon. But apparently the comics were made before the real moon landings. They weren't inspired by real life events because this was all shortly after World War Two, actually. <laughs> I can set off anti-gravity any time I want. <laughs> I've captured that guy. I don't know if he frees himself, actually. You've got, um, you've got your mate, Captain Haddock, who will capture that bad guy if they run into each other. They, they sort of cancel each other out and they both get captured. It's a bit of a weird old thing. Imagine how disappointed people would have been if they'd bought this for their Amstrad GX4000 console. Now the vast majority of people that bought the console really struggled to buy games for it apparently. And so a lot of them only had Burning Rubber, um, the, you know, the, uh, the pack-in game. But Burning Rubber is a lot better than this. Some games really were quite bad. And uh, there weren't that many games released for the console. And uh, of course for the Amstrad Plus in general. But the thing I've always thought... The, the weird thing about the GX4000 console that I think a bit of an argument that, uh, that people never seem to make when they're criticising it is the fact that it it's completely 100% compatible with Amstrad games, but there's no way for you to play Amstrad games except from the cartridge games. So they've released this console into a market that already exists with thousands and thousands of Amstrad games. And of course, some of them were released on cartridge because you've got Batman that was released on cartridge and you've got this and Barbarian 2. So you've released a console, but you're really limiting the amount of games that you can play on the console and if you spend admittedly quite a lot more money to buy one of the computers suddenly you've got access to thousands and thousands of um, other games and Amstrad games were still being released on Amstrad computers and you wouldn't be able to play them on the console it's kind of a negative thing for the Amstrad computer range because there were games released on cartridge and uh, for the console that would have been just released as normal Amstrad games but they were sort of taken away from that and released on cartridge because Pang would have been released as a normal Amstrad game. Navy Seals would have been released as a normal Amstrad game. There would have been a version of Robocop 2 uh, yeah, game over. So it's a very easy game, but I actually got a game over, which I, I'm quite embarrassed by. <laughs> but there you go, there's Tintin on the moon, and that's the end of the video. Goodbye.